Greetings ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mangs and I welcome you guys to yet another Fire Emblem character spotlights. Today we are taking a look at our very first character from the Akanaya sagas, and this one was requested quite a bit. This time around we are taking a look at the first Pegasus Knight to ever grace the Fire Emblem franchise, the feisty but adorable princess Shida. Shida is the daughter of King Mostan of Talis, making her the princess of a small and insignificant island nation. While Talis may have been one of the weakest nations on the continent, however, it did serve an extremely important purpose in Akanayan history, as it was the hideout of Prince Marth while his homeland was being invaded by the Earth Dragon Medius. Shida grew up alongside Marth in Talis Castle, and got to know his retinue of knights and servants pretty well. Already as a child, she was renowned for her great heart and noble spirits. One time, when she accompanied her father to a trip down to the coastal city of Knorda, she bore witness to a gladiator being tortured in the streets. This gladiator was Ogma, and he was being whipped as punishment for helping another gladiator, Santo, escape the fighting pits. Shida immediately reacted by freeing herself from her father's hand and placing herself between Ogma and his masters, using her body as a living shield. The masters knew they could not lay a finger on the princess of Talis without facing dire consequences, so they left Ogma alone. Shortly after, Shida appointed the wounded gladiator to be her personal bodyguard. This act of kindness would ensure the loyalty of the ex-gladiator, and Ogma would serve Shida with a knight's dedication from there on out. One day, many years later, the pirate lord Gazak and his crew arrived at Talis. They quickly set up base in Knorda, and later laid siege to the castle itself. Due to having no knights to protect itself, they conquered Talis and took Shida's father hostage. Shida was outright terrified, as Marth and his knights were at the other side of the island, but thanks to her pegasus she was able to reach them in time and alert Marth to the attack, which led them to retaliating and eventually driving the pirates off the island. Shida would loyally accompany Marth throughout his journeys. She was known for swaying many soldiers into joining Marth's cause, sometimes due to her persistence, but other times due to her beauty and charm. After the War of Heroes, she married Marth and became his queen, and was told to be one of the most beautiful brides in Akanayan history, looking as radiant as an angel in her wedding dress. Shida's appearance has been relatively unchanged from the first Fire Emblem game all the way up to the 12th installment, Heroes of Light and Shadow. In all games, she appears as a beautiful, cute, slender girl with long blue hair. She mostly wears light body armor and high boots, and is dressed in leather and silk. In her latest artwork, she actually has covered up her legs and shows less skin than in the previous games. Shida is quite a petite, slender girl without many womanly curves, but there is one picture from an in-game cutscene where Shida appears next to her Pegasus Knight that has caused quite a bit of confusion among the fans, as it depicts her with a side boob shot of epic proportions, though this is probably just either the artist taking liberties or simply misunderstanding her design entirely, as she is never depicted with knockers that large anywhere else. While most princesses in Fire Emblem history has been depicted as either rude, naive, arrogant, selfish, or simply just lacking in their understanding of the outside world, Shida is the complete opposite. She has a heart of gold and displays a level of empathy for those around her that is pretty unusual coming from royalty. She is either very foolish or very brave, as she is often seen risking her life to talk to the enemy in an attempt to persuade them to join Marth's army. When Navarre and Ogma starts fighting in the official Fire Emblem anime, Shida recklessly places herself right in between their blades, using herself as a living shield to stop them from killing each other. She is also shown to be extremely stubborn, with a fiery temperament that can quickly turn into a reckless fury. One thing is clear though, she loves Marth with all her heart, and will do anything for him. Devotion like this is extremely rare, particularly from a princess. 
As the units, we have to talk about Sheeta in the five different versions she comes in. Fire Emblem 1, Fire Emblem 3, Book 1 and 2, Fire Emblem 11 and Fire Emblem 12, so let's go through them all in chronological order. In the first Fire Emblem game, Sheeta joins you right off the bat, and is your first and arguably best flyer in the game, at least until Minerva shows up. As you'd expect from the Pegasus Knight that basically set the standards for her class, she has amazing skill, speed and luck, but weak hit points, strength and defense. Her resistance is also at zero, but that trait is shared by almost every single unit in this game as well, as the only way to gain resistance is via a talisman, holy water or a barrier staff. A rather well-known but still incredibly useful trick to make Sheeta amazing in the early game is to give her Jagan's Silver Lance, which she can equip right away thanks to her base weapon level of 7. With this lance, Sheeta can very reliably gain kills in the early game despite her low base strength, and is definitely recommended if you plan on using her. In this game, Pegasus Knights can use both swords and lances unpromoted, making them extremely versatile, but remember that the weapon triangle still hadn't been discovered, so don't make the mistake of using swords against the axe-wielding enemies in the early game and thinking it gives her an advantage, cause it won't. Sheeta is quite useful in that she recruits a lot of characters in this game. Kashem, Navar, Jake and Lawrence all require her to speak to them in order to join Mart's army. This makes her a must to field in many different chapters if you want to use these characters, or if you are simply a completionist who wants to recruit everyone. Sheeta's promotion is a little weird in this game, in that she takes a minus 5 penalty to speed as well as a minus 2 penalty to skill, but in return she gains a much needed plus 5 bonus to strength and a ridiculous plus 8 bonus to her defense, not to mention 2 extra movements. This is actually amazing as her ridiculous growth in speed and skill will make her sure to cap them long before hitting max level. Due to this, promoting Sheeta at level 10 is highly recommended, as she will definitely cap those stats regardless. One thing to keep in mind while playing Fire Emblem 1, if you're doing it on the emulator, is that its translation is piss poor, and the Draco shield is actually just named Dragon, and can easily be confused by a crest in this game. I personally did the mistake of thinking this was the promotional item for the Pegasus Knight class, whereas that was simply named Whip, so do keep that in mind lest you want a tank Ishida. All things considered, Sheeta is easily the best flyer in this game aside from Minerva, who joins pretty early but with much better striking power and overall tankiness, and without locking up one of your dragon whips too. But considering the vast amount of promotional items this game throws at you, you can easily use them both, as well as many of the other Pegasus Knights should you want to. In Fire Emblem 3, Book 1, Sheeta fills mostly the same role as she did in the first game. She is by far one of the best flyers in the game thanks to her great availability, though she is still greatly outmatched by Minerva. Her growths actually remain completely unchanged, except for a minor 3% growth in resistance which she shares with all other characters in the game. The difference is that she now comes equipped with a Slim Lance, but luckily the Silver Lance trick still works, so have Jagan traded over. She also now supports with both Marth and Ogma, and will increase their hit and avoid by 10% whenever she is within 3 squares of them, and this is a support that Marth gives back to her. However, since Sheeta is often flying far away from the rest of the army to pick up stragglers and protect villages, she is very rarely in range to actually benefit from this, but it is still useful whenever you can pull it off. Sheeta's promotion also works a little differently in this game. She starts out with a base resistance of 6, which is quite high for this game, but her promotion to Draco Knight takes this all away. She luckily doesn't lose any skill or speed in this game, however, but her strength and defense gains are also considerably lower. Still, due to this game's low caps of 20, it is highly recommended to early promote Sheeta at level 10, as it will do wonders for her fighting capabilities and survivability. Compared to the first game, however, Sheeta is gimped quite considerably in Fire Emblem 3 due to the game's dismount feature, which makes her pretty useless on indoor maps. It forces her to run around with reduced stats and mobility while being locked to swords, and considering many of the game's hardest chapters, including the final chapter, takes place indoors, this severely cripples any advantages Sheeta may have had in the first game. 
Still, her mobility will serve you well on the outdoor maps, and there are quite a few of those. In Book 2, Sheeta takes a massive hit in terms of her usefulness. She now joins in Chapter 5, which isn't horribly late, but she is simply made obsolete by the goddesses that are Katria and Paula. Both of these Pegasus sisters join much earlier, have better base stats, arguably better growths, and join at a much higher base level. Paula, in particular, is able to promote right from when you get her. Because of this, Shida is simply considered obsolete, as both Paula and Katria are able to cap most of the stats relevant to them long before promoting, and they both even reliably cap skill and speed as well, due to low caps, which are supposed to be Shida's main selling points in the first place. The only decisive advantage Shida has over the two is high luck, which honestly doesn't do much for her. Still, if you're just a Sheeta fanboy and want to use her regardless of being terrible in the second book, you might want to have her hold on to a few star shards to increase her usefulness, which she badly needs to stay relevant due to her piss poor strength, and her defense could use some assistance too. The Gemini that drops from the boss in the chapter she joins is amazing for this, as it boosts both those stats by quite a bit, with only a slight penalty to her already high weapon level growth, which she doesn't need anyway. The Leo, which can be obtained from a thief in chapter 8, is also very useful, though it does reduce her defense, which can make her extremely squishy. Combine that and the Leo, and her strength growth becomes 100%, which is quite fun. Another star shard which you can consider giving her is the Cancer that drops from Lang in Chapter 6, which will pretty much fix any survival issues Sheeta has by making her into a flying battering ram. Also make sure you pick up the Iota Shield from Chapter 3 by having a thief, or a unit with high luck, stand directly in front of the castle. This shield eliminates Sheeta's weakness to arrows, which is always a very nice bonus to have. Again, the dismount feature severely handicaps Sheeta, and additionally, you are required to field Minerva in the final mission if you want the best ending, and you arguably want to field as few dismounted flyers as possible. Though, the endgame of Book 2 is pretty laughable in terms of difficulty, so you can pretty much get away with anything. In Shadow Dragon, Sheeta's awesomeness returns. She now comes equipped with her very own special weapon, the Wing Spear, which happens to be one of the most powerful weapons in the entire game, due to it essentially being a lance version of the Rapier, with amazing stats as well as a small built-in crit chance, and also being effective against pretty much all the enemies in the game, as Shadow Dragon loves throwing heaps of armor knights, generals, cavaliers, and paladins your way, particularly in the form of enemy bosses. Bosses. Not only can you hammer the wing spare to keep it useful throughout the game, but you even get a second freaking wing spare in chapter 17x. Not to mention you can buy one wing spare each in chapter 8, 16, and 22, which means that there are a grand fucking total of five wind spares in this entire game. That's a total of 140 uses, which is more than she should ever need. But we aren't done there. As if all of this wasn't ridiculous enough on its own, you can also forge the wind spare to make it horrendously game breaking. Because of the damage multiplier against effective targets, increasing its base might means that you can have Sheeda capable of one hit KOing even the most terrifying generals and paladins, even on the hardest difficulty. This personal weapon, combined with her amazing mobility, makes Sheeda one of the best units in the entire game. Shadow Dragon also introduces the reclassing feature, in case you want to have Sheeta not be a flyer, though I have difficulties understanding why you wouldn't want that. Still, if you want to reclass Sheeta, you should pick either a Cavalier, or once she is promoted, a General or Paladin, as any other class is considered garbage due to being unable to wield her wing spare, and I think we've established by now how stupidly overpowered that weapon is. And as if Sheeta wasn't strong enough already, Shadow Dragon decided it would be a good idea to include the Iota Shield into the remake as well. It drops from the boss in Chapter 22, so it's not like you get it early on, but having a arrow-proof Sheeta in the endgame is always nice. So yeah, no longer is Minerva superior, Sheeta reigns supreme. Or rather, I should say, the Wingspare reigns supreme. 
The credits of Shadow Dragon are actually wrong. After the war, Marth in fact marries the Wingspare and produces overpowered Wingspare children capable of exterminating all horses and suits of armor from the face of Akanaya. The end. Oh yeah, there's another game too, I guess. In Heroes of Light and Shadow, Shida suffers from many of the problems she had in Book 2 of Mystery of the Emblem. She is still vastly outclassed by Katria and Paula, but since she still holds the freaking wing spare, she is no longer the afterthought she used to be. This game is slightly more stingy with its wing spares, however, only allowing you to obtain a grand total of three, with both of the others being sold in Chapter 15 and 19 respectively. Still, due to forging still being a thing, and the fact that this game still loves its armor knights, generals, cavaliers and paladins, Shida remains a beast thanks to her freaking overpowered weapon. All hail the freaking Wingspare. The Wingspare hungers. Oh yeah, and the IoT shield, which used to be available from Chapter 3, is now instead available from Chapter 13X. In order to beat this Gaiden chapter, you have to finish Chapter 13 in 20 turns or less. Thank you for watching this character spotlights. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want me to feature a character in a future episode, please post it in the comment section below. Just make sure you visit the playlist by clicking the link in the video description, as I may already have featured your favorite character. Either way, a like and a comment really helps out my channel a lot, so I would certainly appreciate it. Once again, thank you for watching, my name has been Manx, and I'll see you next time.